I hope you'll be watching for George Washington, April the 8th, the 10th, and 11th, right here on 1011 Strong. Patty Duke Aston is playing the role of Martha Washington. Oh, we've come a long way <laughs> from <laughs> Helen Keller and Annie Sullivan. What a wonderful opportunity for this young lady at the age of 12 to have done the role of Helen Keller. Yes, indeed. And then, 18 years later, was it to play the opposite? Just about 18, 19 years later, yeah. I played Annie Sullivan. Yeah. I've been, been very lucky in the, the kinds of roles, the kinds of historical women that I've had the opportunity to portray. They're very inspiring women. They're very, they trick you into believing that you're very dignified. Yes. <laughs> but the curious thing, to do that role twice, do the show twice, I bet you know all the lines now, don't you? I do. I've known them for 21 mm, years. Yes. I used to, as a little girl, if I couldn't sleep, I don't know why I had insomnia as a kid, but I did. I would start at the beginning of the play and go through all the lines. And somewhere in the it was like counting sheep only doing the play, and I would fall asleep somewhere in the middle of the second act. But don't you forget them after it's over? You put that behind Not that. You, not not that, that. that is... Not that, the tour not some of, of uh, a few other roles I've played. Some you forget, sure. Some aren't worth remembering while you're saying them. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, with regards to her role as Martha Washington, I, I know you've done a lot of research now, because Martha was a vague character out there, not, not fleshed out, not human. I know it's unfair of me to ask this of you now, when I know that I'll be facing battle. But when I return, I'm determined to make you my wife. If that would be agreeable. Uh, you take my breath away, Kurt. I don't mean to be so abrupt, and you need not answer now. I, I only had to at least make my declaration before I left. I'm so glad you did. Will you believe me when I tell you that I have never felt this way before in my life? And you need not wait for my answer. Yes. Oh, yes, I will marry you, my dear Colonel Washington. Why do you suppose Martha Washington burned George's letters? Which means we don't have, have as two much theories. information about that. I have two theories. Depending upon your mood on any given day, you can choose one or the other. One is um, romantic, and the one I chose to believe while making the film. Um, that she, they had so little privacy. Even then, there were people asking questions and people printing things and people poking around and looking for chinks in the armor. And, and so the theory is that she burned them so that something could remain private of them. Um, the other theory, uh, which was uh, sent to me by a, a friend of my father-in-law, is that uh, because Martha, Martha was a woman of her time, she was not that well educated in uh, reading, and writing, and arithmetic. She was uh, terribly well educated in the social graces, mm -hmm. which was what was demanded of her at the time. So that when she wrote a letter, it was um, almost impossible to read. She couldn't spell, and her grammar was atrocious. And George, when he became president, felt that because they were sort of the <coughs> excuse me, new royalty, uh, people might try to ridicule her and use this against her. And so he asked her to burn the letters. And either way you slice it, it's very romantic yeah. that, that one wanted so to protect the other. Well, do you think Martha was aware that George Washington loved someone else in real life? According to uh, our film and Flexner's works and, and the way Richard Fielder chose to write it, she did. She was aware, I don't think she ever suspected that anything happened. Mm. but that this was his first love, mm -hmm. and that you can never take the place of that in someone's heart and soul. And so I think there was a part of her that was terribly insecure about that. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, she was very pragmatic and said, I've got him. Yeah. Well, you know, we went to visit uh, Mount Vernon, George, George and Martha's home, where they are buried. And the size of this beautiful place overlooking the Potomac, they must have had untold wealth. She was very rich. 
She was very rich when they married. He had some money and some property. Uh, not, not yes, he did have Mount Vernon. He owned Mount Vernon at that time, but it was not the Mount Vernon as we see it today. Yeah. It wasn't as grand. Uh, they pooled their resources and did very well. She, uh, when he was off to war uh, on any number of his campaigns, she ran the plantation. Remember, it was a plantation. Mm -hmm. And uh, did an excellent job uh, as the boss uh, of uh, their factory, as it were. Mm -hmm. uh, we just have a second left. Okay. But didn't you do a movie in Duluth, Minnesota? I did. About something about the murders, the murder of my it mother. It was called You'll Like My Mother. And Rosemary Murphy, who plays George Washington's mother, played my mother-in-law. She's always my mother-in-law. She's, er she's everybody's <laughs> mother, mother or mother-in-law. Well, you just, you took Duluth good. by storm. I mean, everybody was really talking about it. And you know that mansion, the home that you did? Did you what hear what happened? a creepy place where people are always being knocked off there. <laughs> that's right. The Bumped off, this was whatever the that's called. Mansion, the Congdon Mansion. And she was murdered. She's been the murdered. Old lady the old was lady was murdered. murdered shortly after you were there. I didn't do and it. And they still haven't found exactly the, the adopted daughter was involved and the son in law. And Someone still, after all these that. years, they haven't still put the whole thing to Isn't rest. That amazing. It's creepy. And that's the, that's the home that you were yes, in. Yes, I always hated it because I'm usually the last one to leave work. I don't know why it takes me longer than anybody else to get out. but. I used to hate being the last one there. Something about the cold and the dark. It was very That's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to have to come and see us in warm, sunshiny Lincoln, Nebraska. I will do that. And if you can't get there, we'll just have to watch you on CBS. Please do. I, I think that you will uh, be very moved as an American citizen. She's, uh, uh, she's won all kinds of awards, and here she goes again. And she's a very <laughs> nice. swell person. Thanks, Lydia. Patty Duke Aston is her name, of course, and it's uh, George Washington here, April the 8th. Played by Barry Bastwick. And the 11th. Your heart will flutter. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Please stay tuned. 10-11 Morning continues.